Are we live now? Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're live now. <laughs> Great. For the first time, we are on time today. So, Nityanandam, welcome to the sixth session of Ashtavakra Gita. Here's Kailasa Singapore. Today is National Day of Singapore, 9th of August, 2023. Happy 58th birthday, Singapore. <laughs> so, all the Singaporeans or permanent residents of Singapore, a very, very happy National Day. And so, a very warm welcome to all of you. Today we are entering to the sixth session of Astavagar Gita. So before we start, let's sit with the back straight. Let's take a few minutes to settle the body and mind to the space of now. So sit in any comfortable meditative posture with head, neck and spine aligned one straight line. And then close your eyes, begin to feel the body from head to the toes, your fingertips, and begin to breathe very, very slowly and deeply. Slow down the breathing. And bring awareness to the two gaps between incoming breath, outgoing breath, outgoing breath, and incoming breath. The two neutral zones. Enter to the space of authentic listening, Shravana, where you just in the pure listening space without judgment, without anything from the past, no residue from the past, just in the pure listening space, ready to receive what Ashtavakra and Swamiji has to impart in this session. So, Holding on to the restful awareness, let's invoke by chanting the Sadguru Vandanam, followed by three times the Mahavakya. Take a deep breath. Nityanandam paramasukaram kevalam nyanamutim vandvati damgagana satrisham tatvamasyadilaksham Ekam nityam vimalam achalam savadi sakshi bhutam bhavatitam trikunarahitam sakuruntam namami Om nityananda paramashivoham Om nityananda paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. Thank you. We can open your eyes slowly. Welcome. I would love you who are joining me here in the Adinam as well as Zoom and on the social media platform. So let's enter into the session. Next slide. So let me just do a recap on the seven verses that we have covered so far. Today is the you know sixth session and we covered seven verses. So just quickly recap so that you remember what we have covered, what Ashtavakra has given the truth to Janaka, King Janaka. So in the first verse, he, he spoke to King Janaka. If you expire for liberation, my child shun the objects of the senses like poison as poison and seek forgiveness sincerity kindness contentment and truth as nectar amrita as the juice of life okay so that's what he said forget about getting in you know distracted or indulging yourself in the sense of the object and the senses it means don't just look at bodily uh, pleasure don't look at sense pleasure okay because these are poison you will derail you from the real purpose of life. So that's the first verse. And then the second verse, he go on to give the next level of truth. He said, you are neither the earth, nor water, nor fire, nor air, and ether, which means you're beyond the five elements, which is the, you know, uh, what this whole entire cosmos is made of and your body is made of. Okay, you're beyond these five elements. 
Now, in order to attain liberation for moksha to happen, realize yourself as a knower of all this and consciousness itself. So he say, remind yourself again and again, you are consciousness. Now, then the third verse he gives further truth. He said, if you detach from the body and rest in intelligence, you will at once be free, peaceful, free from bondage. So, so basically what means what? The body, the attachment to the body or thinking of your body, your, this body, what happened is you create a bondage, right? He said, now, feel free, peaceful when you start to unclutch from this body and just establish in the intelligence, that means the consciousness itself, okay? So that is what he said. Now, then the fourth verse, he said, you do not belong to the Brahmana or any other caste or any ashrama. You are not visible to the eyes, unattached, formless, and witness of all are you. Be blissful. So he again reminded uh, King Janaka, drop all your societal conditioning because Brahmana, the caste, ashrama, these are all established in the society to create certain order, certain structure, certain classification, right? Just like we have middle class, you know, upper class, lower class, or you have different jobs, you know, uh, a professional job, we have the worker's job. All these guys are societal classification. You're beyond all that. So drop all this, okay? Because if you fall into the consciousness, you, you realize you're unattached, you're free, you're formless. You are just a witness of everything. And by doing that, you'll be blissful. Okay, so this is the fourth verse. That's the truth that he gave to uh, King Janaka. Then in the fifth verse, he again reminded King Janaka the next level of attachment that we have. He said, hey, virtue or vice, pleasure or pain are the, of the mind. This, first he told him to unclutch from the body, and then he asked him to unclutch from the societal conditioning. Then the next verse he said, now unclutch from the mind itself, because everything from the mind, whether right or wrong, you know, good or bad, pleasure or pain, they are all from the mind stuff, okay? They are not of you. So, he, then he called him all pervading one, means what? He's calling him as consciousness, right? All pervading. You are neither the doer nor the enjoyer. Verily, you are ever free. That means he reminds him again as consciousness. You are unclutched. You are free. So, next slide. Then, in the last session, he, he gave these two verses. He said, Verily, you are ever free. You are the one seer of all. And really, ever free. Verily, this alone is your bondage that you see the seer as other as, than such. So he, he reminded him, you are consciously means you are the witness. You are the seer. Don't get attached from the seen and the seeing. Right? When you're attached from these two, you are bound. You become a bound soul. It means your soul is no longer free. You have tied yourself with a few chains and you're locked now. <laughs> you're, you're a bound soul. Okay? Because by your very nature, you are free. But when you start to getting attached to the scene and what you're seeing, then that's how you created the bondage, you have become a bound soul, not a liberated soul, okay? Then he said on the last verse, he said, you who have been bitten by the great black serpent of egoism, I'm the doer. Drink the nectar of faith, I'm not the doer, and be happy. So he, he gives a technique, he said, because you think that you are the doer, you are the one doing everything, because as a weakness, as a consciousness, you have associated yourself with this body-mind. That's why you think you're the doer. Okay? When you think that you're the doer, you are now bitten by 
the black serpent of egoism. That means you have become, the ego is now form. So with ego, naturally you will never be uh, free. Okay, you will never be free again because of uh, your association with the ego. Now ego means thinking anything lower than you are God, okay? Means consciousness is nothing but God. That's why I call it all pervading one, right? God is all pervading. So anything you think that lesser than your God, you have ego. It's not like beating the chest. Oh, I'm a great person. I do this, 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 this. That is active ego. Passive ego is the other form of ego, which is trying or pretending to be humble, okay? Pretending to be humble, being humble is also another form of ego, okay? So don't catch the active or passive ego. Just be egoless. <laughs> Just be egoless, you know? Just be true to who you are. Okay, so these are the seven verses that were covered so far. Let's enter into the eighth verse today. Okay, so listen. In the eighth verse, Ashtavakra reveals this thing. He said, burn down the wilderness of ignorance with the fire of knowledge. So listen, pick up the keywords. Wilderness of ignorance means what? The darkness. What, what we call as darkness are nothing but ignorance. Because we are in the darkness, you can't see clearly. You're confused. You can't see reality as it is. So that's why he said, the wilderness of ignorance. Get out of this wilderness by burning away all this with the fire of knowledge. That means that's why in Vedic tradition, a lot of emphasis is given to acquire the right knowledge, the truth. See, if you look at, if you study uh, Sanatana Hindu Dharma, if you look at all this enlightened master being, what they give to the world? Nothing but knowledge sacred knowledge, royal knowledge, right? Raja uh, Vidya. Raja Vidya means royal knowledge. Okay? So, this is what, if you look at all the history, when enlightened being or incarnation come, what they do? They set up university, they set up guruku, they set up schools to give this knowledge. So that's why the fire knowledge, only with the right knowledge, the liberation is possible because everything is based on the cognition, right? How you perceive and cognize the reality, it's what needs to, um, what I call it, needs to evolve from an ignorant person to a person who is awakened. That process needs knowledge, the right knowledge uh, from the enlightened consciousness. So that's why he said, whatever ignorance you're carrying, burn it away with the fire of knowledge. It means what? Whatever you don't know, seek the knowledge. When you, with the right knowledge, you can, you can just burn away your ignorance. Then you will see light. Okay? So I'm the one and pure intelligence and be free from grief and be happy. So one of the greatest misery that we have is being ignorant. You can see all your suffering and nothing but your ignorance. Okay? When you're, you're, you don't know the truth, you're not, you don't know how cosmos work, you run by your mind and you run by society's conditioning. That's where you, you get into the whole mess. You get into fear and greed. So with all this kind of ignorant, what you do is you create more and more uh, tension, more and more stress, unhealthy body. All this kind of thing is nothing but what? Due to your ignorance, the darkness that you're living. Okay. So that's why when an enlightened master happened in your life, he's the light. He He's the light that shines forth. Like you're in the forest and he's the lamb that got you out of the forest. That light is the Guru who gives the right knowledge for you to come out of the darkness, okay? So again and again here, Ashtavarka comes up with one more technique because 
King Janaka did not uh, catch the, the earlier truth that you are consciousness. You're not the doer, right? He's basically, he just said that you are, by your very nature, you're free, you're unattached. But because King Janaka didn't catch it the first time, so he has to give some more verses, some more technique. He said, when Ashavakra spoke to King Janaka saying, you are unattached by your nature. If he had caught that, he will immediately see the light. He will immediately, uh-huh, have that awakening. But unfortunately, King Janaka did not see that light yet. So that's why Ashravakra had to give him another layers of truth, okay? So this inner healing has not happened to King Janaka in that point in time. Was, that's why when he first revealed the truth, King Janaka did not see the light. So that's why uh, Ashravaka had to continue to give him more words, give him more technique. So that is why Ashravaka had to compromise and create more techniques for King Janaka to, to real, realize. Okay, so next slide. So let's look at what King Janaka received from Ashravaka. He said, if you can straight away understand and penetrate the truth with intelligence, you will see that by your very nature, you are unclutched. It does miracles in a being and in the physical, mental and the being level, all the different dimensions, you will feel, uh, you know, miracles happening. When you understand the truth that by your very nature, you're unclutched, unattached, a tremendous quantum transformation happens. Transformation happens in a quantum manner, not step by step. It's a quantum jump, a shift. <laughs> like jumping out of the, from the ground to some higher dimension, okay? So with just one leap, you can take a quantum jump and experience the truth, the awakening in yourself. So understand, for pure truth, if you, if you internalize, if you are able to catch the truth with a subtle brain growth, you will take a quantum jump to experience the truth. When your brain is not so refined to be able to digest these subtle nuances of the truth, then what to do? The master had to give you more words in order for you to, in a mis it takes more words and more verses for you to realize. Okay, so this is what's happening uh, now to King Janaka. He did not catch it when he, he revealed the truth. So he's giving him more, more words. Next slide. So here, Swamiji review one thing. He said, our mind creates the body. So understand, not the body creates the mind. It's the mind that creates the body. That's why a lot of diseases are psychosomatic. Means what? The mind is disturbed, then you manifest as a physical ailments in the body. So he said, all your physical and mental problems can be addressed by this single idea that you are unclutched. The very idea of depression is created by you by constantly linking all your moods. Your body is directly guided by your mind. So let me explain two things. So Swamiji give this two truth. So please listen carefully. Why your mind creates your body? So first, see, it is not only yoga, but medical science also says that our body constantly rejuvenates, renew itself. It also replaces itself. Like every how many days you have a new stomach lining, every how many days you got a new cell and all this kind of thing, right? We are constantly replacing ourselves. Nothing is the same. So this is the first truth. You need to understand that our body constantly rejuvenates itself. Now, the second truth is an important part that again proven not only by yoga, but also biology and medical science. It says our mind creates the body. But 5,000 years ago, yoga and Ayurveda sincerely started believing and experimenting that our mind creates our body. See, so many years ago in Vedic tradition, this already been established as a truth. The mind creates the body. Only Recent years, like modern day, 
many scientific studies are proving that our mind creates the body. They only caught up after 5,000 years later, okay? That is the problem. So our body is directly guided by our mind. Next slide. So, in fact, uh, one of the contributor uh, which Swamiji has a very high regard on is this doctor called Dr. Bruce Lipton. In fact, Swamiji uh, met him and he did uh, some neuro research on Swamiji's brain. Okay, so now let me just uh, introduce this uh, doctor. He, he wrote a book called Biology of Belief. Okay. See, after 30 years of research in the field of biology, he clearly proves that our positive and negative emotion play a major role in our body. They control our body in a bigger way than the DNA and the cells. Okay, So our body is guided by our beliefs. Whatever you believe, you manifest. Faith as well as positive or negative emotion. He said that even our body structure can be altered by the mind. Okay, So that's why... The mind can be so powerful. Now, if you don't um, make the mind, uh, you know, under, what you call that? Uh, you know, under the consciousness, the, the wild mind will just create more mess. So he says, step by step, he proves very clearly that all our genetic problems and all our physical and mental problems are created by our faith alone. So biology repeatedly says that once in every six months, we create completely new body parts. So it means what? Every six months, you have a new body, you know, depending on which organ you're talking about. Like once a year, not even a single cell of our body is the same, okay? Within one year, every part of the body is brand new. There's no same cell. The, all the cells get replaced. The liver is completely replaced uh, you know, and so the the in 21 days, your our intestine is completely replaced. The skins get renewed every five weeks. Okay, so you have a new skin every five weeks, and the uh, the skeleton is entirely new every three months. So that means what the bone structure that you have is a renewed bone every three months. Okay. So your different organs and body parts gets renewed in different times, some five weeks, some three months, some one year. So depending on the body parts. So the, the in summation, it means what? By, by one year, you have a new body. Okay? Catch this truth. If you have a new body every year, why are you bringing back the same disease? Okay? It's like there is a specific number of days for each part of the body to be renewed. So our body gets continuously updated. Our body has enough intelligence to replace itself. Our body is constantly replacing itself. Understand? That's why I say the body is intelligence. What makes our body copy back the same disease? Let's look at the next slide. So he said, then you may ask, then why am I creating the same disease again in this body? How come, you know, I still have diabetes? How come I still have this cancer, you know? If my body is again, again, replacing itself, rejuvenating itself, then why are we carrying the same disease? Right? Why? Ask yourself. Because you strongly believe in the same mind. Your, your mental setup is the same. Your, it is your mental setup that created the disease. And you keep that mental setup. You never, you never evolve your mental setup. Okay? Because you're carrying the same mind, you reproduce the same problem in the new body. Okay? So by clutching to the same belief, the same connecting thoughts, you stop the cell healing happening in your body. Even if it has the intelligence to heal itself, but because of your mental setup, you create the same shit again, again and again. Okay, so that's why you you are stuck. You suffer again. So the moment you allow the inner healing to happen, the outer healing will simply start happening. If you are able to 
you know, shift your belief, the inner healing, you know, happens, then you, you start manifesting in a physical body. So the moment you understand that you are an unclutched being, that truth sink inside you, that moment the depression will just disappear. And I can promise that you will create a completely new body. Your body will be completely new and you will not carry the disease forward to the new body. Okay? Let's say now you have this disease, you have this thing, let's say you have a cyst somewhere. Okay? Now if you unclutch from whatever you believe that created this whole disease or this tumour, within one year you will walk out of that thing. You can completely create a new body. But because you continue to entertain the same mental setup, same pattern, you even the new cells get reproduced, you bring back the same memory from the old cells to the new cell, and you again manifest the same disease. This is what is happening. Okay? Huh? Oh. <laughs> so it is because of a belief that you are connected and that you are a continuous flow. So you carry the same disease again. When you create a new part, you carry the same disease in the new part also. That is what is happening. So the whole point of unclutching is disconnecting from that belief, from that shaft that you created. Once you disconnect or complete with the shaft, you drop the shaft, then renewal can happen without copying the same memory from the old cell to the new cell. So just understand that you are completely unclutched by your very nature. You are disconnected. You don't have to connect the headache you had five months ago, the headache you had like yesterday, or the headache you had 10 years ago. Because you connected all the headache you have, you think that you have headache. If you disconnect all this, because they're independent, separate incident that happened eight years, 10 years, or five years, or yesterday, they're all not related, you're unclutched, then you don't have headache. So you're disconnected and you're completely independent every moment. Understand? Okay, next slide. So, here's the two truths you need to understand. First, our mind creates the body. Second truth, our body is continuously replacing itself. If you internalize these two things, whatever you're suffering, you can just heal yourself. So be very clear, if you don't understand that we are unclutched, if you realize the truth that we are unclutched, okay? So, be very clear if we are, un you understand that we are unclutched. If you just understand this truth, unconnected, independent, illogical thoughts, we can stop carrying the same old identity and the mind within us. You can just create a new identity, a new mind every moment. See, Swamiji said that the worst thing that can happen to a human being is what? <laughs> or soul is what? Carrying the same mind with a new body. But after you die this body, you carry the same mental setup. You go to take a new body, you carry the same mental setup, and again, you wasted your life, okay? So birth by birth, you keep carrying the same mental setup without evolving, without completing. So, so you like literally wasted so many bodies because you are just keep re replicating the same mental setup. He said the best thing that can happen to you is one body but a new mind, uh, many new minds in one body. It means continuously the mind is evolving, evolving. It's not the same even though you're still in the same body. That means what? Expansion is happening. Okay? This is the quickest way to liberation. In this body, that's why you are, we're here to discover our consciousness. When you discover your consciousness, you have a new mind. The, every time you complete a pattern or you let go of your powerlessness, you have a new mind. 
a new mind has been formed. Or every time an initiation happened by the Guru, a new mind is formed because something is rewired inside. Okay? So, so work on the same body but many, many different mind. Okay? That means the mind keeps evolving. So when we stop carrying the same mind and the same old identity, we will stop reproducing the same disease in the new body. We will stop reproducing the same pain, the same depression, the same difficulty, the same disease in the new body. So if you're unclutched, you we will allow your body to heal from the disease which you already have, and you will create a new body, a new system, which will be more immune, energetic, and alive. How to feel energetic and alive is to have a new mind. That, you know, dropping all the old belief on old mental setup, old identity. So you're bringing the new, the same diseases into the body by bringing the same old mind, <clears throat> by clutching yourself with your past. When you're clutched to the past, when you're influenced by your incompletion from the past, Again, you create the same disease. You are not allowing the body to heal itself. That's why I say your body has its intelligent, independent intelligence to heal itself. Why are you creating the same disease again? If you understand this truth by Astavakra, you will never create the same disease in the body again. You are, you are not encouraging the body to rejuvenate and replace itself. The body by its very nature constantly replaces itself. You're stopping the healing process by clutching and connecting to your past. That is the whole problem. Okay? Next slide. So unclutching drum, uh, dramatically improves your health, brings a healing effect in you. Almost all mental problems, psychosomatic, psychological disorder, related to desire, guilt, fear, uh, fear addiction, depression, etc., etc., can be addressed with this single one truth, you are unclutched. If you cognize and internalize this truth and start living it, you will see you have a new body. You walk out of your diseases just like that. But because you don't believe, you say, how can it be so easy? I need to go in surgery. I need to go and do, take some medication. I need to do this. I need to do this. Okay, go and do. You just slow down the process. But if you understand this one truth, you start living it. Simply you walk out. Okay? Understand that all your mental problems, whether related to addiction, depression, or low moods, everything is directly related to this clutching. What are you clutching with? If you understand what you're clutched with, then you know how to undo the clutching. You can undo the knots. If you understand this single truth, the ultimate technique that by your very nature, you are unclutched. Suddenly you see that so many mental problems just disappear, evaporate by themselves. You do not have to do anything at all. They will just disappear, evaporate by themselves. If you internalize this truth from Ashtavakra, reminded you again by Swamiji. Okay, next slide. So when you understand your unclutch, you can work on your physical aches, pains, they will be healed. Whatever pain you have, that pain, this pain. When you, when you Remember this truth, all this pain will just go away, disappear. For example, the knee pain you had 10 days ago, the knee pain you had 9 days ago, the knee pain you had 8 days ago, are all unconnected, independent experiences. But when you connect all of them and put a label, I have knee pain, then you make a pain shaft, the pain shaft of a knee. Okay? If you understand your... your your unclutched nature and stop creating shaft. Don't connect all these independent incidents to label yourself in, as, a, as a pain shaft. You will see the pain dissolving itself. The pain becomes pain because you, be, you label it as pain. Depression 
is depression because you create a shaft called depression. When you don't have this laboring, you don't associate it yourself, you don't have it. When you associate that and create and believe that, then you create that shaft and suffer, okay? So if you allow your mind to unclutch from the past, you will create a new body without all ailments, okay? A new body minus all the old ailments. You'll create a new body which will be more balanced, more energetic, alive, and have more healing power and immunity. These are all possible if you establish yourself back to the unclutched space. Next slide. So here, here Swamiji gives another level. He said, unclutch and get rid of your guilt and vengeance. So this, so first he addresses how to create a new body, right? By unclutching the mind from all the old stuff, naturally you have a new body. So this is the first truth that he gave in the last few slides. Now, then he said, how to get rid of your guilt and vengeance, the anger vengeance. Okay, so he says, next. When you cannot forgive yourself, this is called guilt. You have done something out of your ignorance, but you're not able to accept what you have done. So your non-acceptance is what is called guilt. Okay? Because you can't forgive yourself. Hmm? So, the mistake that you make 10 years ago, the mistake you make 8 years ago, the mistake you make 7 years ago are independent, unconnected incidents that happen in your life. When you connect all of them and think I'm the worst person because I've done all these stupid things, ding, you create a bondage of guilt. Okay? You do not realize the hell that you're creating for yourself thinking that, oh, it's just nothing, I just feel bad. No, but when you create that guilt, it is like a, a sure killer of your intelligence. You just kill your intelligence by your guilt. So I'm going to just say guilt is the, is the worst torture, you know why? <laughs> because guilt is mental health. If you carry a lot of guilt, you will have mental health. Health in the mind. You're experiencing health in the mind. So when you cannot forgive others, it is called vengeance. Okay, when you cannot forgive yourself, it's called guilt. When you cannot forgive someone who has done something to you, that is vengeance. So when you unclutch both from guilt and vengeance, it means yourself and others, it means inability to forgive yourself and others, all this will disappear, okay? Not only will you forgive, you will also forget. <laughs> After you have forgiven, you know, you're in the unclutch, you'll forget that once upon a time you you have you're angry with that person or angry with yourself because there's no connection between your behavior and these thoughts anymore. The moment you unclutch from all this, you realize, oh, okay. <laughs> you don't carry that heaviness anymore. So when you unclutch from your thoughts and from this shaft, you will suddenly see a new inner healing happen inside you. You'll forget about whomever you were not able to forgive. You will forget that you once upon a time carried this vengeance against that person. You will totally forget. You will not even. You will not just forgive. You will not. You will even forget about the whole thing. That once upon a time, you carry such a deep vengeance against that person. Okay? Because when you unclutch, you will just no longer, you know, carry that, that memory. You just forget it. Okay? Next slide. So, a quantum jump free from the past. Okay? So, in this sutra, there's a verse. Uh, the ignorance is coming from the past. That's why when you live your life based on the past experiences, this is where you are creating shafts, bondage, okay? 
So he said, then take a quantum jump, liberate yourself from the past because it's from the past that you create this bondage. Be very clear, you will never be able to achieve any significant transformation or change in your personality by remembering your past. Your past is past. Don't try to, what call it, allow the past to sit in the present moment and destroy your future. Incompletion is nothing but the past sitting in the present moment and destroying your future because that past is sitting in the present moment and making you take again the wrong decision. And because of the wrong decision, because of the bondage, you take the wrong decision and again your future is destroyed. You reproduce the same future again and again. You attract the same person in your life to torture you. Okay? So when we uncrush, the same thing will, that will happen to us will be inner healing effect. You, the uncrushing will create such a tremendous healing effect. You experience a deep silence and peace within us. Remember, Swamiji said that only from peace you explain bliss. Never bliss first, then peace. Peace first, then bliss. When peace is experienced, you will explode in bliss. Okay? So first, go for peace. But the peace does not happen if you're clutched, if you are having a lot of incompletion, okay? So second, the inner healing will start radiating in the physical well-being, which is health. Everybody wants to be healthy. How can you be healthy when you don't have this inner healing, okay? So work on this inner healing, simply you will be healthy. Third, Naturally, you will start radiating in also your relationship. This inner healing will extend to the next layer of existence, which is relationship around you. Okay? And four, because of these three are going beautifully, okay? Healing effect in the peace, and then you have a health, and then beautiful relationship. These three layers of, uh, you know, healing happening you will be creative and productive. Creativity, productivity can only happen if these three layers of your three levels of existence experience healing. Peace, physical well-being, relationship, fulfilling relationship. These three layers, when you experience that completion, you start, to be, you explode in creativity, energy, productivity, and powers also. Okay? Do you understand now? Give me a thumbs up if you're following me in this, what Ashtabhakra is trying to decode. Yes? Thumbs up? Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Now, okay, we'll take some time. I want you to pen down. What are the forms of ignorance that you are holding now? See, when I mention, you may have said, aha, uh -huh, I have this. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm still stuck with this. Take a paper now, write down what forms of darkness, what forms of ignorance you are still entertaining, not aware. Write it down now so that you're going to burn away during the unclutching session. So in this unclutching session, you're literally going to burn them, just like how you burn away the, <laughs> the, the unwanted part. So you're going to burn away all this ignorance. Like guilt, let's say, you do you still carry any guilt? And it's not able to accept something from the past that you have done, write it down. Okay? Or vengeance, you're not able to forgive someone that who make you suffer, someone who make you um, call that embarrassed or hurt, your ego is hurt by this someone else, whatever maybe someone did something to you, could be physically, emotionally, mentally, and you are still angry, carry the vengeance against that person, write it down, okay? Pain. Any pain that you're still holding, that you feel that you're still suffering, write it down. Any diseases you think that you're still having, write it down. All these four, please write it down. They are nothing from your ignorance. 
Okay, they are from the ignorant part of you because you reproduce that in the new body and new mind. Even though you have opportunity to renew and replace yourself, but you don't want, you allow all this fall to again create in the new body and new cells. That's why you're suffering. So now we're going to take this opportunity to write it down. I give you a few minutes, then we enter into the unclutching session to burn them all away. Okay? Remember, you are unclutched. You are unattached by your very nature. If you cognize this direct truth, then all this become irrelevant. Let's bring awareness to all this and start getting, getting rid of them. Okay? Start writing now. Guilt, which is non-acceptance of yourself. Vengeance, non-acceptance of others. Not able to forgive others. Pain, whatever pain you are still experiencing. Back pain, shoulder pain, whatever pain. Or hurt, emotional pain. Pain can be classified in three levels. One, physical pain. You already know which part of the body is having pain. Emotional pain is when you your trust that you're given to someone has been abused, that you trust someone and someone step you at the back or play you up. So that is an emotional pain. And uh, or you you are separated from your loved one or something like that, that emotional pain. Okay. Then the mental pain. The mental pain is when your ego is bruised. Someone says something and you feel hurt, okay? Or you're forced to do what you dislike. You know, you're forced to do what you don't like, okay? Like someone to make you do something against your will. That is a mental pain. I don't want to do it. Why are you forcing me? But you have to do it because of some, something, right? So you carry that mental pain. So... These are the three things. Please write it down. I mean, whatever diseases you should know, you have. Finish writing. Finish writing. Give me a thumbs up if you are done with the writing. I want to see. Okay, someone wrote something on the chat. This will explain those who live in fear because they worry about genetic inheritance or certain medical condition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this also applies to depression. Okay? Why people are not get, able to get out of depression, Paul? So many you encounter. Why are they bringing back the depression? Because they don't know this truth. If they know this truth, they will walk out of depression just like that. But no, they believe they have this depression, so they have to take medication. And then the medication will sedate them and make them stupid. <laughs> so they never come out of this depression because now the ignorance, they have created you know, this unconsciousness that they are not able to raise themselves to, to catch this higher subtle truth. When you can't catch this subtle truth, so what happened? To live with the ignorance only and suffering. That's why whenever possible, don't get into all this medication. If it's psychological related, don't don't allow this medication to sedate you and make you stupid. <laughs> it make you only like uh, dull and you know the dullness is never gonna help you walk out of your disease. Huh? And what all this psychological medication does what? Nothing but make you dull. So that you're controllable. Right? Antidepressant, all these medications, you know, it's just temporary sedate you only. So that you are you pretend you're you're perceived to be calm and relaxed. Not hysterical. <laughs> but that it's not the permanent cure. It's a temporary solution. It's not a cure. Okay? 
So, all right, everybody done? Shall we get ready for the unclutching and start burning away all these four things that you have? Please go and take your eye band, shall we? We will have a 21 minutes, um, one energy cycle, we'll do this uh, unclutching. So, intensely just cognize yourself as the unclutched being. Remember in the last week? No technique, no methods, just established as an original state of being unattached, unclutched, and experience the inner healing. Are you ready? Can you please put on your eye band? All of you have the eye band? Hmm? Yes? Ma, I'll yeah. stop my video now because I'm outside. Ah, so you're not able to do the meditation? I can do it, but it's difficult to hold the phone at the same time. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. You just stop the video, but you, you just listen to the audio. Hmm? Yeah, I will, I will, yeah. Okay, great. So, uh, but make sure you kept, do a screen, screen grab capture, right, of uh, all the attendees, right? You did a screen grab? Uh, I haven't left. Uh, can you do it? Huh? No, no, I she's still. I, just, no, I. Then I unshare. I will unshare, okay? Unshare, please. Uh. Yes, unshare. Just do the screen grab. Okay, so all of you, please put on the eye band. Let's begin the process of the unclutching. Sit with the back straight. Get ready to enter into the pure space of unclutching. Remember what Astavakra revealed in this sutra, this verse. He said, burn the wilderness of ignorance with the fire of knowledge, with this understanding of the truth that you are unclutched. Now, from this understanding, whatever that comes as the form of ignorance, the mind stuff, just burn it. Okay? Just allow it to disappear. Start now sitting in the pure awareness state. We begin the unclutching for 21 minutes.
relax. Om Shanti 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 Slowly, very slowly, remove the eye band. So how was the clutching session today? Is there any new experience from last week? Yeah. Correct. Mm. Mm. Okay. Any more? <laughs> Something is mine. <laughs> so I do have a quick sharing and a question, please. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think. Um. Yeah. Today's lesson, right? Um. It linked me back to you know yesterday, uh, yoga with you, and I, I I mentioned in the in the chat as well that I was experiencing some tension in my right instep. Mm. Then you know today's lesson, you know we talked about you know the physical pain and all that. All that. And I suddenly, then I remembered, oh yeah, eh, actually I totally forgot about this instep tension because yeah, uh, it doesn't seem to be there anymore. So, <laughs> so I think this will attest that, yeah, once, I mean, it, it, it could be psychosomatic that, uh, yeah, like once you unclutch, you're in that space, then the pain naturally just goes away and you forget all about it. Yeah. Then, okay, my question would be, um, mm. yeah, I mean, since we we are unclutched from everything, but does it mean that the only thing that is guiding us is the mission that we are supposed to fulfill in this body in this lifetime? So when you're unclutched, you don't have the interference of the past or the mind to um, create, you know, uh, tension inside you or create fear inside you, whatever that causes you to, you know, not at your peak capacity. See, when you are in your peak, means what? You're naturally creative and naturally productive. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's in your pure space. But when you're not in this peak and not in your productive space, that means you're clutched with something, right? Uh-huh. Mm. So... So when you are in that pig, you will you will do uh you will do wonders in many things. Mm. Whatever you focus will be a success. Whatever you focus with, you know your energy, your understanding. You you do it with so much um uh, easeness and joy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then that's the best place because then you are in an uncrushed space, you are you're divine. You're just manifesting. But your presence, your manifesting, is just play. Mm. Mm? Okay. So which means which means um uh, in this uncrushed space, um mm. it would be at a at a peak whereby we can uh fulfill you know the that that sole purpose that we're meant to do whatever you want to fulfill you happen mm. okay got it thank you See? so in that space you're not supposed to be thinking right you're not supposed to be worrying about anything remember you're supposed to be thoughtless right you're in, supposed to be in the silence 
Mm. In the pure silence, you're the knower. You become the knower of everything. Then whatever you decide to do, whether to manifest this or to do anything, it will just simply happen. Okay? So that means you will actually, this unclutching practice, it stays with you for life. Like you're supposed to practice this almost daily if possible. Yeah? When you be, it becomes your nature. Uh-huh. Right now, it's not your nature because the mind is still there. Right, you come, you fall back to your mind again, but the more and more you start living it, it become your second nature. The mind is just you. When you need it, you just take it out and use it to, to do some planning and all this. <laughs> After that, okay, drop it. <laughs> do you understand? So instead of mind controlling you and worrying about oh how 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 I this kind of thing, you know, you know, worry about this psychological planning, you plan, 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 then get stressed with so many things and then you, you know, you know, you, you visualize or imagine all the worst things that can go wrong. So all these are psychological planning only. You will not be doing that anymore. You will just do what you need to do to do the chronological planning. After that, you just drop the mind and you will remain in that unclutched space. Okay. Got Thank it? You. Yep. Mm. Any other questions? Any other sharing? You will manifest simply by your will. See, when you're in the pure space, right? It's like a bound possibility. Correct? So whatever you dropped in that space, you just simply happen. Got it? Okay. Hmm? You don't even know what? <laughs> just stay there and then whatever you want to manifest just put it inside that space that's all okay and simply you, you the intelligence will move itself towards there whatever you need to do whatever you need to to uh, create you will just simply happen Okay. Any other question? Okay, I hope you find this session interesting and useful. So all of you will work out or any diseases, pain that you carry in this body from this un- this session alone. Okay. All right. So please share in the group what you learned today, the clicks you have, because today I just read from <laughs> I just read from Bhagavad Gita. You know, because we're doing this reading challenge, right? (laughs) Krishna says, (laughs) whatever you you learn from Cosmo, right? The truth you digested from Cosmo, you're supposed to share or enrich others from that. If you don't share, you are a thief. (laughs) Understand? Some people say, I learn, okay, I keep to myself and tell anybody. Now, if you don't enrich others of this great things, it means you're a thief, you've stolen that and you never you never share with the world. <laughs> so don't be a thief, okay? Share this great knowledge of unclutching whatever that you, you gather, the, the truth that you, you, that has clicked inside you and start sharing so that people also, by your sharing, catches the fire of knowledge. When they also caught the fire knowledge, they can burn their ignorance. Okay? That comes only when you share. Okay? Please go and share. <laughs> Whoever didn't attend today, at least when you share in the group, they will read and say, oh, okay, interesting. You know? Then they will go and watch this uh, session again and then they will get the, the, the full, uh, you know, full understanding. Okay? All right. 
let's conclude with the Puna Mantra. Thank you all for joining. Next week is the last session. Please come for this last session of Ashtavagra Gita. Hmm? So let's sit with the back straight. Let's chant the Puna Mantra, the, man the peace chant for completion. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sauvam Bhagavad Shri Nityananda Paramashiva Paruka Paramastu Om Nityanandam. Thank you, Nityanandam.